these people have just elected Donald Trump. And it has really, it has a lot of people very concerned, um, very worried, very scared. Um, I went on the internet looking for one of my friends. They deactivated their account. I mean, this is what's going on. Um, and so people are, people are tripping. You know, people are tripping because when they think about what Donald Trump promised his base, um, it's truly entirely frightening. Are, um, if you are not cisgender, if you are, um, if, if you, uh, if English is not your first language, if, um, if you, uh, if your citizenship status is, um, an issue, um, if you are, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're not an able-bodied person, there are a lot of people who are imagining the worst, and I am not in a position to try to tell you that the worst has already happened, um, because we're only beginning to see what's going on. The only thing that I can do is, um, there really is, uh, a part of what's going on and a worldview and a perspective that some people are are putting out there, that uh, that is that's beginning to confuse a lot of people. So um, let me let me see if I can make this uh, as clear as possible. The reason why some people are not freaking out about this is because we already knew that it was going to happen on election night, uh, November 9, two thousand sixteen. A lot of people began to freak out because Donald Trump reached 270 electoral votes, um, defeating um, the, the DNC campaign. You know, it's what happened. Um, and many of us knew that that was going to happen um, the moment that, the moment that, that Hillary Clinton was nominated or, or coronated or whatever it is that you want to see, that you want to say. Um, this is um, the best explanation that I can give for you. You know, um, the only chance um, that we had to defeat Donald Trump was um, by nominating Bernie Sanders. There weren't many mathematical scenarios that would have allowed Hillary Clinton to win. And what I mean when I say that is that any person who ever told you that it was possible for Hillary Clinton to become president of the United States was lying to you. Very simply put, Hillary Clinton um, will probably never become the president of the United States. And the, the very core reason for that is that there are more people who dislike Hillary Clinton than there are people who like Hillary Clinton. This has nothing to do with my personal views. This is the math. This, these are, are her, her poll numbers. Um, when you go back and you look at presidential um, con contests, um, one thing that we do know is that um, America tends to elect people that they actually like. And any person that America doesn't like, they normally don't elect. And you ask me, well, what happened with Donald Trump? How did he get elected? Most people don't like him. Yes, I agree. Most people don't, don't like Donald Trump. And if you had asked me, you know, a year ago, um, could Donald Trump be president? I would tell you that probably not. I, I might have even said it with certainty, like, oh, hell no, Donald Trump could never be president. Like, I, I, maybe a minute ago, I said that about Hillary Clinton. Um, and the reason why is because they are both um, extremely polarizing figures, um, and they are people who, um, these are people who, there are more people who dislike them than there are people who like them. So if you go out and you're going to do a poll and you ask people, one by one, do you like Hillary Clinton, yes or no, most of them are going to say no. A very, the, the exact same thing happens when you run that kind of a poll for Donald Trump. Do you like Donald Trump? And most people will say no. Now, the polls that they were showing you throughout this entire election was what happened when people asked you, do you like Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump? And given that choice, a lot of people were saying Hillary Clinton. And that's the polls that Hillary Clinton's campaign team were presenting to the public. Um, the, 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 the problem and the issue with that is that most of the polls that they were showing were um, small samples um, and, some, and, and fairly cherry-picked. 
And what I mean by that is that a lot of the way that they got their um, their respondents was um, they they sent they called landlines um, and they also uh, they 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 mailed um, physical addresses. And the people who responded to that were allowed to participate um, in their surveys. The surveys were done on the internet, and some of the people who they actually contacted didn't have internet service, and they had to provide it in order for these people to take the survey. So when you're looking at the polls that showed Hillary Clinton ahead, all of these polls were very small samples um, and very cherry-picked. Um, in essence, when you saw that Hillary Clinton was leading Donald Trump by this much, or Hillary Clinton was leading Donald Trump by that much, it's very possible that those polls were entirely inaccurate. It is possible that Donald Trump was in the lead the entire time. You know, and, and, and that's, that's the issue, is that the data just wasn't available. You know, and so um, I probably told people a year ago, you know, that um, the, the person that we needed to get around you know, that we needed to gather around and to attempt to nominate an elect was Bernie Sanders. And the reason why is because even when there were still full fields, you know, even when we were looking at that line of, of a dozen Republicans trying to be president, even when it was, you know, Hillary um, and Bernie and a third candidate, you know, even when this took place, um, when you looked at all the polls, Bernie Sanders had the best chance of winning. And the reason why Bernie Sanders is not the nominee is because of the way that the DNC conducts itself. So that's where we're at. Um, if you look at hashtag Dem Exit, or if you, uh, what, or if what you'll notice is that there are a lot of people who either have been longtime um, DNC members or who are independents who vo have voted DNC for a very long time, um, and. And they were, were, and these are the people who normally elect a DNC president. You know, these are, we're talking about the Obama coalition. This, these are the people who elected uh, Barack Obama twice. And Hillary Clinton wanted that same coalition. The problem is that they were already committed to Bernie Sanders. And so when, when Hillary Clinton um, was nominated or coronated or whatever it is that you want to call it, when Debbie Wasserman Schultz presented Hillary Clinton um, as the nominee, um, it freaked a lot of people out. And a lot of people said during the time that people were saying, oh, vote blue no matter who, what a lot of people responded with was um, there were some people who said Bernie or bust. There were some people who said damn exit. But what was communicated, what, 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 what the rank and file, liberals, um, independents, um, and progressives, what they tried to communicate to the DNC and to the Clinton campaign was that if Bernie Sanders was not the nominee, then they would not vote DNC, no matter who the Republican nominee was, even if it happened to be Donald Trump. So um, Donald Trump got nominated, um, Bernie Sanders did not get nominated, and the, the people who, might have, who probably would have come out to vote for Bernie Sanders did not come out to vote for Hillary Clinton. And that is what happened. Now, what Donald Trump um, could or would or might do with all three branches of government at the same time, um, you know, he's got the executive branch, the legislative branch, and he even gets to name a Supreme Court nominee. Now, again, you're going to have a Republican president, Republican Congress, Republican Supreme Court. And a lot of people are freaking out because they think that Donald Trump is going to sail a bunch of, of really draconian measures through, and he probably will attempt to. It is possible. Um, the thing is that we really have no idea what, you know, what, what might actually happen. You'll probably see a lot of legal challenges, um, people who will say, well, I'm taking Donald Trump to court because that's not, you know, because, because what he's trying to do is, isn't constitutional. But the judges are going to have the last say on what is constitutional and what isn't. If you, if you go back to the 2000 election with Al Gore and, and George W. Bush, the reason why George W. Bush ended up being... Um, inaugurated, um, is that um, the, the Supreme Court judges had all been appointed by his father. So, I mean, that's, that's what it is that, that we are experiencing right now. It's freaking out a lot of people. I could understand how if, um, if you are not entirely informed that this probably could really freak you out really bad, bro. You know, I mean, it just is what it is. You know, I, I don't have, um, I mean, I, I'm trying to offer some words to try to get folk to try to remain calm. I, 
I don't have any more predictions. And the reason why I don't have any predictions is because um, I was making predictions based on sane scenarios. I was making predictions based on um, a DNC that wanted to play fairly and have fair elections. You know, when I was looking at the numbers a year ago, what I noticed was that Bernie Sanders seemed to have a, a great favorability rating and it seemed to be climbing. Um, his support was widening. Um, what the difference between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton during the during the primary is this: um, Bernie Sanders um, wasn't known to a lot of people. He had there were people who liked him. There were a few. There weren't many people who didn't like him. But there were a lot of people who hadn't heard of him. And what happened over time was that the more people who heard about Bernie Sanders, the more people liked him. The thing with Hillary Clinton is that her no, her poll numbers continued to decline. And all the way up to election day, there was just this drip, drip, drip of information um, in the form of WikiLeaks. You know, it was these were her um, these are emails from John Podesta um, to uh, staff to. Uh, donors to all kinds of people, and what happened was after reading these letters, these emails, um, that, and, and understanding how the DNC campaign was functioning, people could not go out and express a vote for Hillary Clinton and the DNC because many people um, got to the voting booth um, during the primary and weren't allowed to vote. Were given either given a provisional ballot or were told that they weren't registered or were told that their party registered or were told that they weren't in the party that they thought they were. This happened to a lot of people and they didn't get to vote. In Brooklyn, Bernie's you know, Bernie's hometown, um, there are people who were removed from the voter rolls. They call it um, the, the the Brooklyn purge. Um, basically this is this is what it is that you have to realize is that uh, the DNC primary probably wasn't fair. People reacted to it by leaving the DNC, um, and when that when that when that broad-based coalition that elected Barack Obama twice um, became disinterested in Hillary Clinton, uh, that is how you ended up with Donald Trump, uh, and and it just is what it is. Um, don't try not to freak out about it. You try to stay calm. Try to keep your kids and your friends calm. Um, you know, I think Obama's comments the day after Election Day is that uh, the, the sun will shine again. You know, the sun's going to shine again tomorrow. Um, yeah, I agree with you. This is not what any of us um, wanted, or and this is not what any of us tried to make happen. And if you're looking for someone to blame, the only blame that you could place is with either Hillary Clinton herself or with her staff or with the people who supported that campaign. Hillary Clinton's supporters if they actually exist, because we don't know. A lot of us have heard about Correct the Record. It's, uh, it's a group of, it's, these are people who Hillary Clinton hires to go online and to say nice things about her. And, and these are the people who you see online supporting Hillary Clinton. It, that's the assumption. And the reason why is because when you go back and you look at Hillary Clinton, Clinton's rallies, they're, um, they're just don't, they're do, they don't seem to be widely attended. So I mean that's um, that's the reality of it um, is that the Hillary they were hoping that the people who were interested in Bernie Sanders would come around and vote for Hillary Clinton, but these people who were interested in Bernie Sanders were not interested in Hillary Clinton at all. Um, it was a and and for for a variety of reasons, some of them policy reasons and some of them um, are. are like personal reasons that have to deal with the individual's personal responsibility and actions and shit. And pardon my French, but basically, um, it's 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 accountability. And if you think about what's going on even today, Hillary Clinton and um, and her supporters refuse to to take accountability for for having for Donald Trump um, having reached 270 electoral votes. What we told the people who supported Hillary Clinton, um, who were supporting Hillary Clinton a year ago, was that she couldn't win. Lots of people tried to make it very clear that the best candidate for the DNC was Bernie Sanders. And the reason why the best candidate for the DNC was Bernie Sanders is because in all of the scenarios, it looked like Bernie Sanders, if nominated, would win. There was only one scenario where Hillary Clinton might possibly win, and that was if Donald Trump were the nominee. And even though Donald Trump um, became the GOP nominee, what happened was that Hillary Clinton um, was involved there was this constant drip, drip, drip of information every day, and by the time that that it, we got to the to the voting booth, there was simply no there there was no enthusiasm for Hillary Clinton whatsoever, and um, it is what it is. 
So, yo, um, my name is Montel Claude. Um, I'm the, the chairman of the Southern California Apple Box Factory. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to, to Doogie Howitzer. I really appreciate, uh, he's the managing director of Apple Box Factory News. I appreciate all the hard work that he does. I really have a whole bunch of stuff that I got to get back to. Um, so, um, I'll try to make another report. We'll try to keep you updated. Um, this one is a raw one for my buddies. Um, yeah, the best thing I can tell you is, um, you know, if you believe in God, keep believing. If you don't believe in God, then keep your eyes open and keep um, focusing. Um, um, love thy neighbor, you know, um, and uh, believe in the possibility of good things because good things could possibly happen. Uh, again, one more time, uh, you're watching Apple Box Factory News. I'm on to a cloud fat dog. Holler at me. Boop. <laughs> Later, folks. Was that okay? Did you get what you